जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स टूडे विल स्टडी द टॉपिक रियल नंबर्स राइट फ्रॉम आर स्मॉल क्लासेस वी आर स्टडिंग नंबर्स फर्स्ट वी स्टडी काउंटिंग नंबर्स विच आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज नेचुरल नंबर्स देन वी वेन वी वेन टू हायर क्लासेस वी स्टडी होल नंबर्स विच इंक्लूडेड जीरो विद द नेचुरल नंबर्स देन वी हैड द नेगेटिव नंबर्स ऑफ द पॉजिटिव नंबर्स टुगेदर दे वर कॉल्ड एज इंटीजर्स एंड देन केम द फ्रैक्शंस and fractions of negatives became rational numbers then there were numbers which were not rational also so those were irrational and together all the numbers are called as real numbers so let's together start real numbers first is euclid division lemma so euclid division lemma states that for any two positive integers a and b there exists q and r such that A is equal to B Q plus R. So where R should be greater than or equal to zero, but less than B, where B is divisor. Here A is. If you can recall your U division algorithm, it says dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder. So lemma is the same form. A is our dividend, B is our divisor, Q is our quotient, and R is remainder. So obviously remainder can be zero, but it should be less than divisor. So let's take an example. For a is equal to fifteen and b is equal to three, so you can clearly observe that fifteen is three into five plus zero. Zero is the remainder. So q is five and r is zero. Then is our Let's say, take an example. Let us show that any positive integer can be represented in the form 4q, 4q plus 1, 4q plus 2, or 4q plus 3. That means any integer can be represented in in any of the four forms. So we take a any integer which is positive, and we divide that integer by 4. So q be the quotient and r be the remainder. So according to our division lemma, a is equal to 4q plus r, and r should be less than 4. It can take any value 0, 1, 2, and 3, but not greater than 3. So if r is 0, our a is 4q. If r is 1, then a is 4q plus 1. If r is 2, then a is 4q plus 2. And lastly, if r is 3, then a is 4q plus 3. Then comes our Euclid division algorithm. It is based on lemma only, and it says it tells you about how to calculate HCF of any two numbers or more than two numbers with the help of our Euclid division lemma. So, what actually algorithm is? It's a series of well-defined steps which gives you a procedure to solve any type of problem. So here we are solving. HCF. So Euclid division algorithm is used to find HCF of two numbers. Let us take those two numbers as C and D, where C is greater than D. So what are our steps? Step one is we apply lemma on C and D so that we find whole numbers Q and R such that C is equal to D Q plus R. Now if R is zero, then C D at this step is HCF and R HCF is HCF is D for C and D. But if R is not zero, we apply lemma to D and R. Then we again continue the process till remainder becomes zero. We keep on continuing this process of division through lemma till the step we get zero and. At whatever step we get remainder as zero, the divisor at that step is our required HCF. Let's take an example. We are taking uh, finding HCF of 225 and 135 using our division algorithm. So we take 225 is a larger number. So we take 225 as C and D as 135. So when we divide 225 by 135, we get 225 as 135 into 1 plus 
So our quotient is 1 and remainder is 90. So we say that remainder is not equal to 0. So now we apply lemma again and we apply lemma on 135 and 90. So we divide 135 by 90 to get 135 as 90 into 1 plus 45. So our divisor is 90 and 135 is dividend. Now again 45 is a remainder. So remainder is again not 0. We will have to apply lemma again one more time. So we get 90 as 45 into 2 plus 0. So here quotient is 2 and remainder is 0. So our process stops as we get remainder as 0 and the divisor at this step is 45. So our HCF of the given numbers 225 and 135 is 45. Now comes our fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So this theorem says that every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes this representation is called prime factorization of the number and this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factor occur. So we can write prime factorization of any number, any composite number in any of the form. Let's see an example 1092. So when we factorize it, we get 2, 3, 2, 7 and 13. So we can write these factors in any order. We can write both the 2's first, 13, 2nd and 3 at the 4th and then 7. Or we can write 7 at the first step and then 13. So any order but prime factors would remain the same. Now with the help of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, let us see whether 6 raised to power n can end with any digit 0 for any natural number n. So for any natural number to end with 0 it should have 10 as a factor and 10 contains prime factors and 2 and 5. That means that number which should end with 0 it is mandatory that it shall have 2 and 5 as prime factors but if we see our number 6 raised to power n. So its prime factors are 2 into 3 raised to power n or 2 raised to power n into 3 raised to power n. Prime factors of 6 are only 2 and 3. We do not have 5 as prime factors. So and by your fundamental theorem we cannot have any other factors of 6. So 6 raised to power n cannot end with 0 in any case. You may take any natural number n but 6 raised to power n will never end with 0. Now comes our HCF and LCM. HCF and LCM with the help of prime factorization. So HCF of two numbers is equal to the product of the terms containing the least power of common prime factors of the two numbers. That means whatever numbers we are being given, first we look out for common factors which are common for common factor in all the numbers and then the least power and the product of all those numbers is our HCF. And LCM it is of two numbers is equal to the product of the terms containing the greatest power. We look for all the factors whether common or not common and then we go for the highest powers and the product of all these numbers gives LCM of given numbers. Let's see an example. We take 6 and 20 and we calculate LCM and HCF by prime factorization. So prime factorization of 6 is 2 raised to power 1 into 3 raised to power 1 and 20 is 2 into 2 into 5 or we can say 2 raised to power 2 and 5 raised to power 1. So for HCA we see 2 is the only common factor in both 6 and 20 and the least power of 2 is 1. So HCF is 2 raised to power 1 or simply 2. Now for LCM we will see all the factors. So all the factors are 2, 3 and 5 and highest powers of 2, 3 and 5. So we get 2 raised to power 2 into 3 into 5 and that gives you LCM of 6 and 20.
Now there is relationship between HCF and LCM of two numbers. And it says that product of two numbers is equal to HCF and LCM product. So HCF, if we take two numbers A and B, HCF of AB into LCM of AB is equal to product of A and B. We see an example that 26 is 2 into 13 and 91 is 7 into 13. Its HCF is 13 and LCM is 182. And LCM and HCF product is 2366 and product of 26 and 91 is also 2366. Please mind students, this relationship holds only when you have to calculate HCF and LCM of two numbers. It does not hold for three numbers. Let's take another example that HCF of 306 and 657 is 9. We have to calculate the LCM. We can take help of this relationship if we divide the product of these numbers by HCF, we get LCM. So, first we multiply 306 and 657 and then we divide by its HCF to get LCM as 22,338. Now, we have already done irrational numbers in class 9. So, we again come back to irrational numbers and here we'll prove how we can say that the number given is irrational. So, irrationals are again we are recalling it. Irrational numbers are those numbers which cannot be expressed in the form A upon B where A and B are integers and B not equal to 0. And if we represent them in the terms of decimal representation then non-terminating non-repeating decimals are are irrational numbers are examples are square root of non-square numbers are irrational cube roots of non-cube numbers are irrational numbers pi is an irrational numbers and so on before proving that our square root of prime numbers are irrational, let's see a theorem that let P be a prime number. If P divides A square, then P also divides A where A is positive integer. So if we take prime factorization of Q as 2 raised to power M and 5 raised to power N, then X has decimal expansion which terminates and Q is not of the form 2 raised to power m and 5 raised to power n then x has decimal expansion which is non-terminating, repeating or reoccurring. Let's prove square root 2 is irrational. So with the help of this we can prove that square root of every prime number is irrational. So to prove that we take its contradiction. Let's say that square root 2 is rational. When we say that square root 2 is rational, that means it can be represented in the form of P upon Q or A upon B where A and B are integers and B is not equal to 0. So we say square root 2 as A upon B and we do the square of whole equation to get 2 is equal to A square upon B square. Cross multiplying we get 2B square is equal to a square that says 2 divides a square and by theorem if 2 is dividing a square it should always also divide a so we can say a as 2c that means it's a multiple of 2 which is represented in the form 2c and c is another integer now substituting this value of a is equal to 2c in our previous equation we get 2b square as 4c square being too common on both the sides we divide whole equation by 2 to get b square is equal to 2c square. Now this equation tells that 2 divides b square. When 2 is dividing b square it shall also divide b. That means b is also multiple of 2 and we say that a and B both have 2 as a common factor. 
but this contradicts our assumption that a and b are co-prime that means the assumption that square root 2 is rational is also wrong and hence square root 2 is irrational following these steps we can always prove that square root of any of the prime number is irrational now let's move to our terminating and non-terminating decimal expansion so any rational number whose denominator is of the form 2 raised to power m and 5 raised to power n is always terminating but if there occurs any other factor also besides 2 and 5 then the decimal expansion of rational number is non-terminating reoccurring decimal expansion so let's see we have got 17 upon 8 so 17 upon 8 is 2 raised to power 3 into 5 raised to power 0 so it has only factor as 2 and it can be represented in the form 2 raised to power m into 5 raised to power n where m is 3 and n is 0 so it is terminating decimal expansion let's see another example 29 upon 343 now 343 is 3 raised to power 5 so 3 raised to power 5 there is no factor like 2 and 5 but another factor as 3 so its decimal expansion would be non-terminating repeating that's all for the chapter let's look out for the quick recap real numbers we have Euclid division lemma, then Euclid division algorithm to find HCF and LCM of two numbers. Then we have fundamental theorem of arithmetic which gives us prime factorization and again with the help of this we can find HCF and LCM and we revisited irrational numbers which had, we had done in class 9 to see whether the numbers are terminating or non-terminating. Thank you students.